here's what I get asked a lot, and here's what I see being asked a lot on Cora. And it drives me squeak chair. And it kind of drives me nuts. Um, and the, the, the camera industry kind of drives me nuts because they've come up with this formula to sell people a super cheap camera. And they're really not doing people any favors. Uh, and I want to explain why. So the answer to the question, should I buy a Nikon D3000, 3100, 3200, 3300, 5000, 5100, 5200, 50, I don't know where they are, 5500? Are we there yet? Should I buy one of those? Is it a good beginner camera? The, the answer to that is not quite as simple as you would think because it's really tempting to see this in Costco for uh, four, 450 bucks used, a used D3000 on and, and Craigslist for $200 with a kit lens. It's really tempting to look at that and say, well, it can, get, it can start me in photography. But really, starting in photography, you'll either walk around with the same crappy lens on there and never take it off, in which case, why are you carrying something so big? You could have a compact camera that can fit in your pocket and, and be just as good. Or a Sony mirrorless camera, cheap NEX6, like the one I'm using to film this. Um, or you're going to want to get better. And better in photography, there's nothing, this is a D5300, nothing in this body, this body is astonishing, the technology is astonishing. It's astonishing for video, that's why I bought it, from a kid. Um, the body is astonishing. But here's what happens when you want to get good at photography. When you want to get good at photography, it's not about the camera, it's about the lenses. And that's where things get tricky. So let's do a little bit of a history lesson. Here are some old manual focus Nikon cameras. The FA, beautiful camera. The FG, FG, FG20, FG. My first camera, that was my first, second camera. First Nikon, it's one of those. A little 50 millimeter compact lens, look at that. There's nothing to that, it's beautiful. Um, and they're small. There's a hundred. There's a 100 millimeter telephoto. It's tiny. And the zooms were tiny too. Um, and then came the creation of autofocus. And a whole bunch of Nikon people had lenses like this 50 millimeter, like the 100 millimeter, like the beautiful 135 millimeter f 2.8 prime. Uh, there were there were some okay zooms, okay zooms, but zooms. Zooms weren't as good back then. Um, and along came cameras like this. The N2020. Quite a camera. Very much like uh, the old, very much like the older Nikons in that it used the aperture control to change aperture. Then came along cameras like this 6006, there was a 4004 and 8008. They're great cameras. And this is before, this is before Nikon put out those piece of crap silver things that were paper light and had the first incarnation of the, um, the kit lens. They were just horrible. But for people who were serious, they started making some really cool autofocus lenses like this 35 to 70 millimeter constant f2.8. Now, if I say constant f2.8, what I mean there is the aperture is the size of the, effectively the size of the hole. If the size of the hole doesn't change as you zoom, that means it's a constant aperture. Modern lenses and cheaper lenses, even older lenses, the zooms, the maximum aperture when it was at its widest was better than the maximum aperture when it was at its most zoomed. And that's just physics. Um, to keep things inside a package nice and tight, like a modern zoom lens, like the consumer lenses, there's a compromise in size. But back then, people were buying serious lenses. That is a serious piece of glass. It's, it's very simple. Um, 
It's very like a manual lens, it just has a little bit of added mechanism to focus. Same with this uh, 70 to 210 constant f4. And this monster, which is still made today, the D version of the 80 to 200 constant f2.8. That is a beast of a lens. Now it's still available today and new for, I think it's about 1500 bucks. About 1500 bucks. So what Nikon did was, they have this little built-in focus motor and this, the camera senses the distance and there's a little blade here that goes into a slot on the lens and turns a screw which focuses. Now this one struggles a little bit. Ah, yeah, focuses. Still focuses. Awesome. But people who bought this camera, they probably had a bunch of older lenses. And that's the nice thing about Nikon. There's that same little pancake lens. Happy, ha totally happy on this camera. And that was a way that people could afford to buy into a new body with the new autofocus technology and maybe get one autofocus lens and start. But they'd still, they could still use all of their grand old Nikon prime lenses, the fixed focus lenses. Smile. And that was, that's kind of Nikon's philosophy is to continue to build bodies that are backwards compatible with with older lenses. This 50mm 1.4, that will go on a Nikon DF, one of the current Nikon digitals. Actually, it'll go on a Nikon 3000-5000. It kills Nikon D700-7000, so be careful putting super old lenses on. you got to know what you're doing. Um, unless it's converted. I think I've got a super ugly conversion here somewhere. Yeah, somebody's filed down this edge and soldered a little nub on there to start to communicate with a newer, newer focus rate. So that lens will work very happily on any Nikon digital camera. go. Great lens. I use it all the time. I actually use it all the time on that Nexus NEX6 that you're, that I'm videoing with, with an adapter. Love it. So, then what happened? So then Nikon came out with digital cameras. The one Nikon D, what was it, the D1X? D1000? I don't remember. And then they started building consumer lenses like the D50 that I have here, D50, D70, D80, the D200, the D300, which were more pro lenses, um, and up to the D90, they were thinking the same thing. They were thinking, these guys have all bought these lenses, so let's build a focus motor so that these old, this old D50, I look like I don't know what I'm doing, so that this old D50 will focus this film camera lens, which I think is from late 80s, and that's a decent lens. Then Nikon thought, nah, let's not do that anymore. Let's put out a camera that's smaller and lighter and cheaper. Like the D3000 and the D5000 is where they started, and it was the first time that they killed backward compatibility in a big way. This does not have a focus motor built in, therefore it cannot use any of these older lenses. So, so what, right? So you've got a camera body here, 5300, I think I paid, used $410 for that with the kit lens a year ago. You can get a D3000 for 200 bucks all day long. On Craigslist. But then what happens? Yeah? Here's what happens. So you if you buy the, even the best Nikon D5000, you get into photography, you have the kit lens, you realize the limitations of the kit lens, 
your the lack of control of depth of field, the problems taking photos in low light. Now you'll you'll probably want to let me see what we got here. We got a 35 millimeter f 1.8 G lens with a built-in photo focus motor. You probably want one of those. It's a great first step to take your photography to the next level. Um, but then what? Then you have a choice. Say you want a medium. Say you want a telephoto. Say you want the, the typical kind of something to 200. The consumer, 55 to 200, costs 350 bucks. 200 used, maybe even less. You know why? It's crap. Um, it's crap. Then you've got the VR lenses. Something like, uh, for a while I was playing around with a, was it 28 to 300? 28 to 300, that's 850 dollars. Now it's great to have a lens that is really, that is kind of wide and goes to really zoom, but do you have you any idea the, the, the number of sacrifices that have to be made to give that level of flexibility? To go from there, that's heavy. So to go from everything that can do really well, everything that can do really well you're not gonna it, it's just it's just not gonna be as good so if you're serious you want good glass and here's your choice and that telephoto you've got a you've got a choice of kind of crap or you've got a choice of having to buy the new equivalent of that that has a focus mo motor built into it and it's two grand two grand so where did this money saving where is this money saving happening? It's 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 just not. You you're you're screwed. You have to buy new lenses, new modern. You can buy used lenses, but you have to buy the latest technology of lens. On the other hand, if you do what I recommend people do, at the very least buy the Nikon D90, used two hundred to two hundred and fifty dollars. Nikon D90 has a built-in focus motor. It's one of my favorite favorite cameras of all times. I've had three of them on and off. I just like to have them once in a while. I'll see a lens that I want attached to a D90 or a bundle that I can make money on and I'll keep it for a while. Love that camera. Nikon D90, $200, $250 or Nikon D7000 for $350-ish used on eBay. Or Nikon D, that's the D50. I've been carrying the wrong one. That's the D50. Nikon D7100, which is, I think you can get them for about 400, under 500 for sure. Amazing crop sensor camera. And then you can even go full frame dirt cheap. D700, 650 bucks. Um, 650 bucks and you have a full frame Nikon camera that will work with every single lens made, every single autofocus camera lens made by Nikon since the beginning of time. And that combination is really special. That is, that is it. Hard to, hard to beat. After the D90, for budget conscious, I would actually go to the Nikon D3S. Not the D600, not the D750, they just don't... For me, those both of those cameras feel like that D7100. They just don't do it for me after the D700, which feels like a real... You know, it's the real thing. So, if you, if you don't buy an Icon D3000 or D5500, you can have that for under $300. It's the 35 to 70, which comes in a D and a non D version, f2.8. It's really good. Um, you can buy that for about 100 bucks. 70 to 210, constant f4. And Nikon has just released a replacement for this. 
7200 F4 now. Yep, $1400 new. Probably 950 used. I was I got that for 80. You can get those for 100, 120 all day long. Is it as good as that? No. Is it better than the piece of crap 55 to 200 all day long? Without a doubt. It's actually pretty good. I own it because from a spec perspective it's the same as that. With it's one stop, less aperture, and the same as that. So if I want to travel light, I'll take that. I don't I don't I don't very often because this lens is just so glorious. This lens I got for 300 bucks. Um, which is a which was low. It had been beaten up a little bit and I had to give it some love, but I was looking today 450 on eBay. This lens is still made by Nikon, um, $1,500 new, something like that. The new version of this is the VR2, 7200, 7200 or 70, yeah, 7200. Uh, it's it's about $2,000. It's got a built-in focus motor. It will work with a Nikon D3000, 5000. Um, I don't like it. I don't like the photos it takes. I'd love to have VR, but this is this is just a few pieces of glass and a big metal tube. Um, it's hardly any glass. It's hardly any complexity, and it just works. It's 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 superb. So those three lenses, those three lenses are enough to justify not thinking a D three three thousand and five thousand series is cheap. Um, there are other lenses like the 60mm macro, micro as Nikon call it. The D version that doesn't have the built-in focus motor is significantly better than the newer version and cheaper. So, bottom, bottom line, bottom line, if you think you're going to get serious, buy a D90, D7000, D7100, or a D700, depending on your budget. If you're not going to get serious, don't buy a DSLR. Have a good one.